Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and today I want to talk with you about some performance factors. First off, density altitude. Density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature, says the FAA. But what does that mean to you? To put it into plain English, I always explain density altitude as density altitude is where the airplane feels like it's at. Meaning that if density altitude is 2,000 feet at the surface, my aircraft rolling down the runway is going to feel, is going to perform as though it's already at 2,000 feet. This is of course for non-aspirated aircraft engines, meaning those that breathe without the assistance of a turbocharger. So if you don't have a turbocharger, or you're not a turbine aircraft, this applies to you. It's where the airplane feels like it's at. How does your aircraft do performance-wise at higher altitudes? Well, it doesn't perform better, does it? You may burn less fuel and those types of items, but as far as climb out performance, we get a decrease in performance as we increase in altitude. Density altitude is where the airplane feels like it's at. High density altitude means poor performance. Now there's three factors that really go into and affect density altitude. The first is high temperatures. The warmer the air, the less dense it will be. Now, don't get confused there. The air is less dense, but that adds to an increase in density altitude. Follow me with that? These three all here, high temps, high humidity, more water vapor equals less air mass, those water molecules, that water vapor is just attaching itself to the oxygen molecules essentially, and Thus, we have high humidity. More water vapor equals less air mass. And then lastly, high elevation. The higher the altitude, the less dense the air. We're just adding altitude to density altitude, right? The three factors, high temps, high humidity, high elevation, all add to an increase in density altitude. That'll be straight on a check ride. It'll be straight from the knowledge test. Understand that. Now there's three ways that I'm going to show you here how to calculate density altitude. The first is how you probably did it on your knowledge test if you've taken one already. Let's look at this chart here and this chart is straight from the private pilot knowledge test supplement. Let's say they give you the temperature as 25 degrees Celsius. Then they give you the altimeter setting of 2980. First things first, as with any performance chart, we need to know our pressure altitude. So we'll take our altimeter setting of 2980, come over to our chart, find 2980, and we get 112 feet as our pressure altitude. Let's make it real easy. Let's say we're right at sea level uh, as our elevation, because if not, we would, you'd add your field elevation here. So 2980, 112 feet of pressure altitude. Then we get the temperature here is 25 degrees Celsius. So I come on over down here. Remember we have Celsius here. I have Fahrenheit here, don't get confused. We come across, I'm looking for 25. So here's 21, here's 27, here's halfway in between. So we're leaning slightly this way. I'm coming up and I told you, like I said, we're just going to sea level essentially. We'll come up and we'll follow this all the way until we hit sea level and then we'll continue on across. And where does that put us? Uh, again, it's tough to get real accurate. I don't know, roughly 1,300 feet or so, 1,200, 13, 1,400 feet, somewhere in that ballpark here is where that actually places us. Now, the other way we can calculate this is using the formula. And this is how I really do it in the real world. Let me break it down here for you. Density altitude equals our pressure altitude plus this formula, 120 multiplied by the difference between our outside air temperature, OAT, subtracted from standard temperature, 15 degrees Celsius. So let's do the math here. We learned on the previous slide our pressure altitude was 112 plus the answer to our formula here. Our outside air temperature was 20 five, right? Our standard temperature is 15. That there puts us at 10. 120 multiplied by 10 gives us 
1,200, I complete the addition to get my density altitude of 1,312 in this case. Not bad, considering we came from the other chart and said, well, it could be 1,200, 1,300, 1,400. We got close, right? Now we can get more exact. Let me show it to you another way and go to our giant E6B here. And again, you thought the way we did it for the knowledge test wasn't exact. Wait till you see this. So maybe you haven't seen this on the E6B, but we have density altitude, which will be shown here in this window, followed by our air temperature here. And talk about, geez, look how big this scale is. We go from zero to plus 50, and this is degrees Celsius in this little window here. And then pressure altitude is shown in thousands of feet. So this little inch right here shows 5,000 feet of pressure altitude. So what we're to do here is to take our air temperature, in this case, a positive 25 degrees, so there's 20, there's 25, and place it over our pressure altitude in thousands of feet, which is just barely on the other side of zero here. So we'll come and we go, we look 20, there's 25, I come down here, just barely to the other side of zero, and I look, and I read my density altitude here also in thousands of feet. I'm just barely on the other side of 1,000. Could it be 1,200? Could it be 13? Could it be 14? You just gotta hold it just right in that spot. Or we look at our formula and get 1,312. Is it so important to be perfect? Well, for the sake of the knowledge test, yes. But in the real world, would this suffice? Would the chart suffice? Is there really going to be a, a huge difference on your go or no go decision? You say, man, if it was just 1,300 feet, I wouldn't go. But because it's 1,200, I'm going anyways. We don't make our go or no go decisions based on that. We look at that and go, wow, that density altitude's high. I probably shouldn't go flying. I should leave a person behind, leave some bags behind, and make those sort of adjustments. That's what's so important. Understanding the performance characteristics of your aircraft knowing the three factors that increase density altitude, knowing what you can do about it, and knowing how to calculate it. This is more than just the knowledge test. Hopefully you saw a method that speaks to you and you go, okay, this is how I can do that in the real world. I'm excited to read your comments below on Facebook, YouTube, m0a.com, however you're watching this, and just thank you so much. It was so wonderful to meet you all at Sun and Fun and all these air shows just coming up ahead of us. We're so blessed, so excited to meet you, shake your hand, and really hear your aviation story. So enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya. Pass your check ride, or I'll pay for it. Join our number one rated online ground school and participate in live mock check rides and interactive written test prep. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to learn more.